Okay! Oh hey guys! Has anything felt off to you recently in the video game industry? Because everything feels off to me. Oh and yeah, I'm in a new home. Woohoo! 2020 was quite a terrible year with COVID and being stuck in lockdown. But one thing that made that year easier for video game fans was the elusive promise of the next generation of video games. There was so much speculation, so much waiting, with it being interrupted every once in a while with a new piece of information or a new reveal, but a lot of waiting. Now, PlayStation seemed like it was going to have a pretty nice launch with some good launch and launch window titles, but nobody could get a PS5 because of the chip shortages and not enough units to match the high demand. Xbox seemed like it was going to have a quiet launch and be focused on delivering important titles later in the console's life, while PlayStation seemed like it was going to have a decent bit. Well, PlayStation did have a decent launch with a handful of good games to come out, but then they started releasing less and less, and now they're down to releasing one major exclusive a year. That's it! And Xbox has started releasing the waves of all the games they announced a few years ago, but they're always mediocre mixed bags except for a few which get ported to other consoles, which is great for PS5 owners, but defeats the purpose of getting an Xbox. Oh, but what about Game Pass? A, not everybody wants that. B, you can also get that on computer. That's just the upfront problems of the two big gaming companies this generation, because trust me, it's worse than you think. So focusing on PlayStation and their blunders this generation, let's look at how many major exclusives have come out in the past three years. Horizon Forbidden West, a classic third-person action-adventure game PlayStation makes a lot of. God of War Ragnarok, another classic third-person action-adventure game PlayStation makes a lot of. Final Fantasy XVI, a change of pace for a beloved series that has no right to be exclusive on the PS5. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, a remake of a beloved game from the PS1 days that has no right to be exclusive to the PS5. Spider-Man 2, a fantastic superhero game to rival the Arkham games, but with an all-over-the-place story and just decent side content. And this year, they released just one major exclusive again with Astrobot. And hey, hats off to PlayStation for mixing it up a little and giving the PS5 variety after the console's been out for almost four years at this point. PlayStation didn't have that much variety on the PS4 either, but new games were coming out pretty frequently for that console, making it an absolute hit that generation. But this generation, only a few new games are coming out, and since they're also coming out for the PS4, there is no reason to buy a PS5 because the upgrade in quality and graphics is not worth $500 with only a few good games being PS5 only. And that's not the only problem with the PS5 either. No, let's talk about the console itself and all the problems it has. You would think, being a new console that's upgraded from the previous gen, that it wouldn't have so many problems, but that's wrong. This new and top-of-the-line gaming console has more problems than my over two decades old Nintendo 64. What on earth was PlayStation thinking when they made this? Did they bonk their heads into a wall and forget how to make a good, reliable console? Because it sure seems like it. Where did that wall even come from? Let's look at a problem that my PS5 randomly gets sometimes when I turn it on. Look at this. There is no way the picture is supposed to be this tilted and this messed up, and yet it is. And this has happened on multiple occasions. Not on every once in a blue moon event, but a relatively frequent event. Nothing like that ever happened on my PS4, yet it happens on my top of the line PS5. Now let's talk about why everybody has to lay their PS5 on its side instead of letting it stand up vertically, because that's just such a fun story. So in computers you have to put thermal paste on the CPU for cooling purposes, and Sony's ambition when making the PS5 said no, let's do something different and legitimately dangerous. Instead of using regular reliable thermal paste, they decided to use liquid metal which if you don't know, can destroy these circuits in computers, so it's not a good idea to intentionally put it in a computer. Now, PlayStation did come up with a way to keep it in place in the CPU, but it's also difficult because it's liquid. It can still leak out even if you secure it pretty well. So if you set up your PS5 vertically, the liquid metal can leak through the bottom onto the rest of the board and destroy your PS5, which is why everybody keeps it on its side to prevent leaking. Let me ask Sony a question. 
Sony, what the fuck were you thinking to put something that can destroy circuitry inside the PS5 to slosh around? Is there seriously such a problem with regular thermal paste that they would rather use something that could destroy the system? And on top of these problems, my PS5 will also randomly, for no apparent reason, shut itself off. This usually happens when I'm trying to turn it on from rest mode and the console has a meltdown, shuts off, and gets mad at me for it shutting off. What were the developers of the PS5 smoking when they made such a buggy console? Oh, but it looks cool. Sure, if you like the way a fancy router looks. They went too far trying to make the PS5 look like this unique, futuristic console that they forgot to actually design it to be a solid, reliable console. Also, the PS5 doesn't have backwards compatibility with the PS1, 2, or 3 games, so you have to get a special PS Plus subscription to stream these old games, which is just really finicky. Also, in a recent development, PlayStation made the bold move to announce the PS5 Pro that will be launching at $700 with no disk drive and no vertical stand. Who is this even targeted for? Why would anyone want to pay $700 for a game console? The whole point of game consoles is that they're much cheaper options than PCs, but PlayStation's really trying to push it just because they can. Man, I'm sure the five people that are going to buy this are getting so hyped right now. Well, those are all of PlayStation's unique problems and blunders this generation. Now let's look at Xboxes, and then I'll tell you why the fucking Wii U is better than these two jokes of game consoles. Hi, I'm the head of Xbox, the company known for making consistently good game consoles that definitely end up being the massive successes that we hope for them to be. We at Xbox pride ourselves on bringing quality and innovation to the gaming industry by consistently making mediocre games, revising our consoles with just more storage, and changing the way people play video games with Xbox Game Pass. That is getting another price increase at the end of the year. Xbox was ahead of PlayStation in revealing their next-gen high-performance console, which is funny because they actually had quite a lot less to show for its launch. The Xbox Series X didn't have new first-party games to show off what the Series X could do, just the third-party games that were absolutely not worth the upgrade. The Xbox series of consoles do have backwards compatibility support with every generation of Xbox consoles, but so did the Xbox One, and it was still limited. Basically, anyone who upgraded from the Xbox One to the Series X within just the first year of the console's life got no new games and negative $500 out of it. But hey, if you got the Series S, you only got negative $300. Seriously, not even the Wii U had that much of a rough start. Now in the past two to three years, Xbox has started releasing the waves of games they promised. The only problem is, half of them are just, eh, alright. Forza Horizon 5, eh, alright. Grounded, actually good game. Hi-Fi Rush, absolute peak. Redfall, eh, alright. Starfield, eh, alright. Pentiment, that's pretty good. Forza Motorsport, eh, alright. These games, along with what they've shown of their upcoming games and projects, which are also getting delayed, really just show that Xbox is not doing near as good as anybody hoped. I mean, I felt like everybody would have liked a comeback, but no. I wouldn't say they're doing any worse than PlayStation when it comes to first-party games. In fact, I'd say they're doing better because they actually have games. Mostly. What makes Xbox possibly worse than PlayStation is their insistence on having everyone play through Xbox Game Pass, which doesn't sound bad, but they're literally doing everything they can to make the Xbox Series consoles obsolete and push everyone away from them because you just don't need one at all to play all of their games. You can literally play Xbox games on your phone if you wanted to. And they're also releasing some of their games on PlayStation, which from a business standpoint may seem like a good idea because money, but... Why buy this? What's the point? That's their problem this generation. They aren't sure what they want to be and they just keep half-assing a lot of their games just to get them released, which is a damn shame because I actually wanted to see them be on top of things this generation, but no. But as a video game console compared to the PS5, the Series X, not the Series S, is a much better deal. Firstly, you get more storage. Second, you can set your console up vertically without it fucking dying. I'm fucking dying! And thirdly, it is a much more functional console than the PS5, which isn't that much. Also, Xbox also announced a stupid console revision that will offer no graphical or performance enhancements. It will just have more storage and cost $600. Which is honestly still better than the PS5 Pro. 
I mean, nothing's worse than the PS5 Pro. Cock and ball torture from Wikipedia. Yup, PlayStation and Xbox have not been doing well at all. Well, since I showed you how Xbox and PlayStation have been absolutely blundering this generation, it's time I show you why the Wii U, Nintendo's second biggest failure, is better. For starters, unlike the Xbox, the Wii U did indeed launch with games even if none of them were system sellers. Well, it didn't really work out that well. The Wii U tried to be unique and interesting by having the gamepad, which could make gameplay more interesting, or was supposed to, but the Xbox Series consoles and the PS5 consoles are just the same thing, but with slightly more pixels and frames. That's it. While the overall game library wasn't super special, the Wii U did indeed have games, and some of them were absolute bangers. The Wii U re-released good games that deserved a re-release unlike PlayStation. And you also had full backwards compatibility with the Wii library, which had a ton of stellar games. With Xbox and PlayStation, you have to pay $80 a year to play games online. On the Wii U, it was free. On the Wii U, you have the Mii Maker. On Xbox and PlayStation, you have lame-ass icons. The Wii U was an upgrade in graphics from the Wii. Xbox and PlayStation are barely better than the last generation. Yeah, the ninth generation has been pretty bleak so far, and it seems it's going to continue that way as Xbox and PlayStation keep doing the same things that just aren't accomplishing anything. And on top of that, AAA games keep decreasing in quality, as the demands from those AAA companies keep increasing, as they keep making stupid decisions like microtransactions, making multiple versions of the same game that are just way overpriced, and crying when their shitty games do poorly. The only thing keeping the gaming industry on a forward path are Nintendo and indie developers as they actually put in all the effort and detail into their games, with Nintendo on top of that also giving their console a unique feature that makes it worth to buy, along with all the amazing games you can get for it. So, after going through all that, I now continue to regret my life decisions since this made me remember I paid $550 for a console with no games and somehow less personality. I also almost burned my house down.